Direct News TV December 5, 2023 Israel-Hamas War Live, Fear Grips Southern Gaza Amid Israeli Bombardment Israel ramps up attacks across the Gaza Strip, including near hospitals and in the south of besieged enclave where ground operation is intensifying. Israel's indiscriminate bombardment of Palestinian civilians in southern Gaza has reached new depths, Norwegian Refugee Council chief warns. Row between WHO and Israel over military notification to move Gaza medical supplies. This is a social media row that is burning up, and we can expect that it will continue to rumble on. Earlier, we had WHO Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus sending out a message on X, saying that the UN agency received notification from Israel to remove supplies from a medical warehouse in southern Gaza within 24 hours, as ground operations will put it beyond use. He then made an appeal to Israel to withdraw the order. Kogat, the Israeli agency that deals with civilian policies in the Palestinian territories, said that they did not ask the WHO to evacuate. But, we can see that the WHO did take this seriously to start moving stuff off of the warehouse. Fatima Salem, Palestinian who fought Sheikh Jarrah eviction passes away. Fatima Salem, a Palestinian activist who resisted Israeli attempts to evict her family from their home in Sheikh Jarrah has passed away. Our hearts are broken by the news of Fatima Salem's passing, I.R. Amin, an Israeli organization that focuses on the Israel-Palestine conflict in Jerusalem wrote in a post on X. We grieve that she left this earth before seeing the Ark of Justice, yet remain resolute in the shared struggle to press on and demand it, I.R. Amim wrote. Muhammad El Kurd, a Palestinian writer from Sheikh Jarrah said in a post on X that Salem passed away in Sheikh Jarrah. Israeli lawmaker Ben Gvir once set up a makeshift office in her yard, under army protection, but she stubbornly fought him, El Kurd said. Israeli forces attempt to encircle Palestinian fighters in northern Gaza. Israeli forces continue to conduct clearing operations in the northern Gaza Strip as they attempt to encircle Hamas fighters in what they describe as strongholds in the Shujaa neighborhood of Gaza City and Jabalia City, located 4 kilometers, 2.5 miles to the north, according to the Institute for the Study of War, ISW. The Washington, D.C.-based think tank said Israel's military has warned the Hamas commanders in Shujaa that Israel will use extreme force in the neighborhood to destroy the Palestinian armed group. Palestinian fighters with Hamas, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and the smaller Palestinian resistance committees are battling Israeli forces in Gaza using small arms, rocket-propelled grenades, RPGs, anti-armor grenades, mortars, and improvised armor-piercing explosive devices targeting Israeli tanks, the ISW said. This is consistent with Hamas' use of increasingly sophisticated tactics against Israeli forces in the Gaza Strip after the end of the humanitarian pause. The al qassam Brigades, Hamas's military wing, claimed four attacks on Israeli forces and vehicles east of Beit Lahia using RPGs and anti-personnel munitions, the think tank said. New video shows destruction in vicinity of Kamal Adwan Hospital. An exclusive Al Jazeera video posted on social media shows destruction just outside the gates of Kamal Adwan Hospital in Jabalia in northern Gaza. Al Jazeera Arabic correspondent Anas Al-Sharif, who is reporting from inside the hospital, said that several people have been killed and injured following Israeli strikes, which have sent waves of panic through the thousands of displaced civilians seeking shelter inside the medical facility. There's a large number of displaced children, women, elderly in the sick here, Al-Sharif said. The situation here is dire. There's a sense of fear because the bombing has not stopped. Israeli War Cabinet to Meet Families of Captives A meeting with the entirety of the War Cabinet including Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is set to take place on Tuesday, though it was originally scheduled for Monday. This is the second meeting of its kind as Israeli families are demanding answers on how to bring their loved ones back immediately. There has been immense pressure on Netanyahu and his war cabinet, not just from the families of those being held captive inside Gaza but from Israeli society as a whole. 
public opinion is totally and completely behind the Bring Them Back campaign and it is the most sensitive and important issue within Israeli society. Arrests made as Israeli forces conduct raids across West Bank. Dozens of Israeli armored vehicles and military bulldozers have been deployed across the occupied West Bank, as its forces carried out a series of raids and arrested several people, including in Wadi al Anais south of Bethlehem. Israeli forces also carried out raids and arrests in the following areas. City of Jenin and the Jenin Refugee Camp. Al-Zara neighborhood in Jenin. Al-Basatin neighborhood in Jenin. Asker Refugee Camp in Nablus. Diyashe Refugee Camp, south of Bethlehem. Vicinity of the Tawalba Mosque in Jenin. Vicinity of Jenin Hospital. Vicinity of Alamal Hospital in Jenin. Jalazown Refugee Camp, north of Ramallah. Town of Bait Likya, west of Ramallah. Village of Budras, west of Ramallah. Village of Deir Abu Mishal, north of Ramallah. Rapper Loki releases, Palestine Will Never Die, Solidarity Song. Rapper and activist Loki has released a new track to show solidarity with Palestinians and shed light on Israel's war on Gaza. The London-based rapper said he hopes the song Palestine Will Never Die, featuring my Khalil, will play a small part in driving home just how significant the cataclysmic events in Gaza are for humanity. U.S. Envoy to Travel to Gulf to Discuss Maritime Security The U.S. State Department announced Special Envoy for Yemen Tim Lenderking's visit to the region, where he will discuss security in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. His trip comes as Iranian and Houthi attacks on international shipping threaten almost two years of joint progress to end the war in Yemen, the department said in a statement. On Sunday, three commercial vessels came under attack in the Red Sea, with the USS Kearney shooting down three drones fired from Houthi-controlled areas in Yemen. A Houthi spokesperson said they had attacked two Israeli ships. The Israeli military denied any connection to the vessels. The State Department added that Lender King will also be meeting with representatives from the UN, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and Oman to support a resolution to the Yemen conflict. Multiple casualties reported in Israeli strike on home in Gaza City District. We're getting reports from our colleagues at Al Jazeera Arabic, as well as the Wafa News Agency, of multiple deaths and injuries following an Israeli attack on the Sheikh Radwan area of Gaza City. Women and children are believed to be among the casualties in the attack, which hit a residential building belonging to the Al Yaziji family. There were no immediate reports on the exact number of casualties. The Sheikh Radwan district is near the Kamal Adwan Hospital compound in Jabalia, which has also been separately targeted by Israeli bombings. Palestinian people living under constant trauma, expert. Dr. Gabor Mate, an author and trauma expert, has described a conversation he had with Palestinian women who had been tortured in Israeli prisons during a recent visit to the occupied Palestinian territories. Somebody said to me there, we don't have post-traumatic stress disorder here because the trauma is never post. So this is a people living under constant trauma, Mate told Al Jazeera. Mate, who is Jewish and survived living under Nazi occupation as an infant, said that while Zionism has been one response to the Holocaust, another is that, never again, should be, a slogan for universal understanding. From my point of view, the most pro-Jewish thing that you can do is to stand up against this occupation because ultimately, it's not good for anybody," he said. Bernie Sanders opposes $10 billion package for extremist Netanyahu government. The U.S. senator has signaled his opposition to the Biden administration's proposal to send $10.1 billion to Israel to resupply the country's Iron Dome and David Sling defense systems as well as replenish military stocks. I believe that it would be absolutely irresponsible to provide an additional $10.1 billion in unconditional military aid that will allow the Netanyahu government to continue its current offensive military approach, Sanders said on the Senate floor on Monday. What the Netanyahu government is doing is immoral, it is in violation of international law, and the United States should not be complicit in those actions. Sanders continues to face pressure from U.S. progressives to call for an immediate and lasting ceasefire in Gaza. UN warns of even more hellish scenario unfolding in Gaza. 
The UN reports that Israel launched one of its heaviest air, land, and sea bombardments of the Gaza Strip over Sunday and Monday, killing at least 349 Palestinians and injuring more than 750, according to the territory's health ministry. With Israeli ground operations now focused on southern Gaza, conditions do not exist to deliver aid, the UN's humanitarian coordinator for the occupied Palestinian territories Lynn Hastings said, warning that an even more hellish scenario is about to unfold in the Palestinian enclave, according to the UN's latest Gaza assessment. My name is Kingsley. Please like, share, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be the first to be notified whenever we post, you won't regret it.